Uh, good afternoon. I'm really delighted to welcome Mitch Wade and Bill Hertzberg to our new weekly series on fitness training at the FSH Society Sequester Camp. These webinars will be held every Monday afternoon, three o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so do the math to figure out your local time. Uh, so I'm in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I'm at Ramp Fitness. This is my gym here in, in about Southeast Portland, if you're familiar with the area. Uh, this is where Bill comes to me to, we, to do training. Uh, we, used to, we started about four years ago at a big corporate gym, and now we've made it to just a little spot where just him and I are. Uh, it's fantastic. We've had a you know, really awesome journey together. Uh, you know, there's definitely some ups for sure, and there's definitely some downs. You know, it is a, it's a challenge for sure. Uh, that is one thing we wanted to make sure and, you know, paint that picture correctly is it's not going to come easy. Some of it is hard to understand, so we're going to do our very best to try to explain what we're saying. So using that Q&A, please ask away. I would love to answer some questions that you have. Obviously, throughout the weeks, we'll probably do this a little bit more and you'll probably get more of a hang of it. I do believe we're going to do every Monday, like, like June was saying, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, so tw uh, 12 noon my time, and like you said, adjust where you live. Uh, the idea is to try to you know, give you a couple of exercises that you can work on at home. Um, a lot of our approach is neuromuscular, so a lot of the brain and muscle connection. Um, so we're going to start real simple here today with just a couple of, you know, lighter exercises, but it, it's something simple that can be done at home for the most part too. You know, we want to connect a lot of the body part together, bring it back to the midsection. Some of the exercises we might need somebody to help us with or some kind of a band or a training device is, is really helpful. But uh, we plan on doing this every Monday, and then uh, I think Memorial Day weekend, we're going to skip that week and then go into the next week as well. Now I can see myself. I need to scoot back. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, we should. We plan on having a lot of fun, so please ask us questions as we go along. There's going to be a lot of information, but we'll try to keep it relatively simple as well. Bill, you want to give a couple words? Hi. I uh, uh, want to commend Mitch for sticking with me. Uh, <laughs> I... Uh, have uh, been disheartened uh, to, to get the FSH and notice progressive weakness and initially was following the recommendations of avoiding exercise. This was an old recommendation. And uh, the idea was that exercise was harmful to people with FSH. That was the old teaching, but the new teaching is that uh, we can benefit from exercise and uh, I can say anecdotally that that's been the case. It's been a great benefit to me. I've got uh, Judy here by my side and she's going to help me uh, illustrate some exercises that Mitch is going to uh, walk us through. Wonderful. Bill, if I can get you guys to set the computer up, so it's, I need to stop scooting forward. If I can get you to set the computer up so they can kind of see a good array. So usually like when we do the Zoom, if you can put it on the couch and have you guys sit over by the chairs, you'll be able to see well, then just tilt this down a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna get started with kind of explaining the first exercise, Bill. It's gonna be the sword swing. So you won't really need Judy on this one. This is gonna be just you. That's when we're connecting kind of long to here. So to break it down in a little bit more of a simple form, we can start upper body, we can start lower body. Uh, I, I, I'm very aware that this disease can cause, you know, different areas to different people. So adjust accordingly. You know, if you have questions on that as well, a simple regression or progression to the, to the exercise, I'm more than happy to answer those questions too. So, you know, Bill and I will both do some demonstrations here. Uh, the purpose of this is to kind of connect our contralateral sides. What I mean by that is right and left. It's a very natural way of movement, whether we are running, walking, or even sometimes the way we lunge or sit or move as well, just even whether it's in the house or the kitchen or the yard or whatever. So starting here, grab onto something, have a good support system there, maybe some kind of handrail if you have it close or anything that is you know, secure. We don't want to grab something that can tip and might lose balance. So start with the full body and we'll go here. We're trying to connect. If it's a swing, that's totally fine. We call them sword swings. So it becomes a momentum type deal. What we're looking for is for the front side of the body to get longer and then get shorter, kind of using the abdominal area. So when I talk to Bill about this while he does it, I try to paint the picture of what muscles we're using while we're doing the exercise. And it's been such a huge help for him to know what the purpose of the exercise is, not just making me say, okay, you're gonna do about 10 arm swings. Arm swings are beneficial, but we all do it with more intent when we know why we're doing it as well. 
So when Bill's holding on, he's so good at it now, he really doesn't need necessarily a railing, but we definitely started with a railing. Uh, it was it was at the big corporate gym, so it was like a little hand railing to the side. That's, that's great, Bill, exactly. Now you can play with certain things. When the leg goes back, if you have the ability of squeezing the butt cheek, do it. And then when it comes forward, it's more of a front side abdominal core exercise. So it really goes back and forth of using the front side and the back side, which is very important for postural and having good balance. Uh, Bill, if we can grab Judy, we're gonna go into the second exercise. So it's just gonna be a push. Is she close to you? Yeah. I am. Hi, Judy. So what I'm gonna have you do is pretty much just kind of go hand in hand, almost like as if you're about to arm wrestle Bill. Yep. And then what you're gonna do, or Bill, either one, and I know you guys have arm wrestled a couple of times, so there's probably a champion, champion in the room right now. When we're pushing, I want you to either push on his chest or Bill, and the sense of when he pushes on his chest while he's pushing away, it plays the connection from the brain to the muscle, which is the chest muscle. That is our primary muscle that we're trying to use. So almost like tap at it, you got, yep, yep, yep. And then just go back and forth, give him, give him some resistance there, Bill's really good at this now. We've been doing this for years. So he's probably gotten a lot stronger there. And just go back and forth. Think about consistent. Let's have, let's have Bill do it. Let's have Bill do it. Hey, Bill, you're, yeah. getting, you're, getting, you're getting too strong. Bill, I want you to do it. And I want Judy just to have a consistent resistance here. Think about back and forth and get the chest muscle tissue to fire. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> hey, Judy. Let his hand, bring his hand all the way in, okay. and then push it all the way out. Yes, yes, much more like that. So kind of a consistent resistance the whole time. Bring in, push out. Think about the front side of the chest. Allow the shoulder blade to move. That's, that's what I'm looking for right there. Yep. It doesn't need to be a ton of resistance. Give yourself the resistance that you can do. Exactly. The shoulder blade is moving. We're playing with sometimes the chest push to make sure that the pec muscle is working. Mm -hmm. When I'm with Bill, I'll sit there sometimes and almost kind of jab at him, almost like a woodpecker, and just get, be really annoying about it, but yet let the brain kind of feel the idea, feel the presentation and the, or the presence of touching that muscle. And a lot of times it correlates with the actual push and getting it to fire. What we've had with success on this one with, with some triceps, some biceps, some chest muscle, you know, uh, muscular activation has been just key. Okay, so we're gonna do the opposite now. Judy, you can pretty much keep your hands there. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. And your right shoulder's probably getting a little tired too. Yeah, exactly. Judy is happy about the switch. <laughs> it's, a, it's a double workout for you both, it's great. Now you're just pulling. So you're, Bill's very strong with the pull. Just give him consistent resistance. Almost think like you're doing a saw together. Like this. Yes, you're pulling, Bill's working his back shoulders now, and Judy's just kind of pulling away, so it's a little bit of a resistance. Yep. It's a pull. Oh, exactly. And you wanna find muscle activation back there. So Bill, your focus is the back side of the shoulder. Once again, move the scapula width. When you pull, your shoulder blade should be moving with you. And then this is when I get to be really picky. I start telling him to stop turning his body, make him have function in more of just the shoulder joint. So, you know, a lot of what we do is really breaking down the individual movements and making his brain correlate with it as much as we can. Yes, these are some of our beginning exercises when we were just kind of getting started, kind of getting some of the, you know, the easy kind of pushes and pulls, highs and lows, you know, and we'll get to a different time where we go up above. That's when we definitely need somebody to help us, you know, kind of get that. We use a pull, like a dowel stick, to get up above. Um, but the activations of the front side and back side are an easy way to go. If you don't have a person and you do have access to a band, that works great too. So I have a small band here I want to show you. So it's a small workout band and I have a handle to it. So it's very, very tiny. It's very light resistance. If you put it up, kind of posted to something, you can then make the pulls, you can then make the pushes. Bill would do great with the pulls. Some of the pushes are a little bit more challenging for him with some of the wrist extension. Yeah, absolutely. That one would be a little strong, it's a little bit bigger, but it would still work. 
the idea is to get even as soon as you start going like this it would pull and you would use the muscles in the back but that's one of the more important parts is that we want to know that we're using the muscles back there we want to know that the scapula are moving the shoulder blades are moving when we're making a pull and the connection of the two is what has really made so much success of having his arms to be able to go overhead. Bill, can we do that now? What do you think? That's pretty awesome. Where, where would you say, you know, it was- I was not able to do that at all. Uh, in fact, I don't, I wouldn't have been able to bring my hand up to my mouth before uh, starting unless I was supported by a table. So this is, this is incredibly important to me functionally. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as, as I sit here and, you know, I'm being kind of dorky about all these muscles, it's also very important for just the everyday activity too. You know, I love this. So that's why I get a little bit dorky on it. And please ask questions on that. I, I love to give answers as well, but it's really goes to some of the, you know, the everyday activities of life that is also so important as to why we do this in the sense of, you know, having drinking water, being able to eat, being able to, I, I told Bill, I'd never tell this secret, but he can now do the dishes, you know, unloading to a higher shelf. And it, it's, it's the function parts that really make the quality of life improve as well. You know, and sometimes we don't have to have it be multiple hours in the gym. You know, he comes in, he sees me twice a week. You know, we've been doing that pretty consistently for multiple years now, but it's not like I, you know, I don't make him get down and, and get sweaty every single time. We work hard, but it's really about consistency, consistency to the body, paints amazing success it really really does so starting simple you know please if you have some questions about this i would love to give you some answers but we will go into more you know i'll give you some more some harder some maybe easier some just different like i said i know that everybody has some different different struggles in different areas so we're going to try to get some different you know exercises in all the different parts of the body so um, please help us with that you know if you have specific questions or have a specific spot that you want us to go over let us know. We'll try to fit that in as, as well as we can as well. Bill, you got anything else for us? Well, uh, you, you want, we should address some of the questions on the chat. I noticed yeah, that- I, I can't people... see those. So yeah, if you can oh, see those. I'm don't, on, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll read them to you. Uh, so people have not yet posted questions, but uh, now is the time if you have questions. Um, I had a question. Um, because some, some people um, can't, are having difficulty standing, so they might be in a chair, a wheelchair, um, or they may have, uh, be insecure about standing, and you know, obviously having a partner there to help stabilize is very important, but are there um, ways to adapt these exercises to do them from a seated position? 100%, you know, definitely the push and pull would be very easily replicated to the sense of, you, I mean, you can be standing or sitting. A lot of times when we do the pulls, uh, Bill is sitting, um, you know, because it's more so of a, he can create force down with his hips to make a little bit of the, the twist and pull. Uh, so I would say for the most part, actually, I would prefer probably people to be sitting there anyway, because I really want them to focus on the upper body and kind of that shoulder girdle area. Um, you know, if, if that's difficult, I mean, I would almost put a hand on a table and just slide across the table. If you can't support your arm up, put the hand on the table and just slide across. What we're looking for is just, you know, muscle activation and some, maybe some spots that don't even have, you know, any activation or, you know, Bill has always said something about his triceps and now, you know, we're able to do specific movements that is absolutely tricep dominant. So it's really just about creating that regression. So as you ask, you know, can we do something sitting or standing or anything? Yes, absolutely. The source- well, fact, that's how we began. We, yeah. uh, we had to break these exercises down into very, very elementary uh, functions because I was so incapacitated. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Actually, in, in the chat window, Tina Duong, who is a phenomenal um, neuromuscular physical therapist at Stanford Hospital, I said, just she's on this, she's been listening and she agrees. She says she suggests also starting from sitting and then progressing to standing. Yeah, so that's cool. absolutely. Um, and, you know, like you said, I mean, you know, everybody can have some different you know, limitations or places that they feel comfortable to go. So, you know, adjust where you feel is, is, is right. Um, I think the first thing that we want to just really make sure that we're, you know, elaborating there is that keep it simple. You know, don't go too far out, outside your comfort zone. 
we want to really focus on individual spots and not jump the gun too much. Um, so I, I think sitting on almost all of these is fantastic. The sword swing, we can do individual limb movement if you have the ability of raising over top. If you do not, just allow somebody to do it for you. Your brain, your brain feels the movement. It should attach to either the, you know, some kind of a joint feel, possibly some muscle activation. Um, it could be in areas that we don't necessarily want it to be. A lot of people are heavy up in the traps. But, you know, like I said, or what, like everybody said, it's, everybody's different. So I didn't you know, believe... Uh... I didn't believe Mitch initially when he said uh, passive movement would be useful, but I've come to uh, uh, trust trust his judgment. It, it turns out that the passive range of motion and then the supported movements lead to independent movements, lead to movements that I can do with resistance. Yeah, yeah. And we, we've had a few exercises. You know, this is a good thing to kind of make note on as well is when we do that, you know, if we started with a sword swing where someone was just, lit, you know, doing the complete control for you and just, you know, kind of walking around you, drop the hand, make them hold, or come here and just make them hold. So within the, the positions, you know, create different little tests within the exercise to then make it go. That, I, I, what I call that is a drill for a skill. So if we have a skill of doing the sword swing, that first exercise, so that's our whole skill, we want to make, maybe make five different drills that is all pertaining to that sword swing, but maybe different little tidbits here and there. You know, eventually, maybe a month down the road, Bill tries the sword swing all together, and he said, whoa, I, I, I did it. And I said, well, you know what? We broke it all down. Your body found the individual, you know, movements and phases, and then it goes together. And, you know, that's how, that's how kind of a machine works. That's how our bodies work. It's, you know, we have many, 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 many muscles to control, but as long as we've, you know, got a little bit of some education on how they all work together, it, it works pretty well. It works pretty well. We just got to get the brain in there too to think about some of the movements when we're doing it. Mitch, I don't know if you can see some of the Q and A questions, yeah, I, but I, I'll yeah. feel I'll I'll feed them to you. So oh, okay. Um, so we have a question uh, from Katrina who says, "What if you have a scapula thoracic fusion? Uh, should you still do the exercise? So are you familiar with that surgery where the scapula is?" I am. I am. You know, and as long as they don't have, you know, instructions of not moving the actual humerus bone, you know, the humerus should still allow some movement there. The scapula itself is not going to track as well. So you would probably have limited range of motion. But I still think the other supportive muscles, you know, our rotator cuff muscles, some of the deltoids, whether it's a posterior or anterior delt, builds very strong anteriorly on the delt side. But a lot of us are more so just from that front side action. And that's why I love the poles. So even a very, very light pull, you know, like, like I kind of said, if you put your hand on a table and just slide backwards, that should get something to fire on the posterior side. You know, what are we going to get to fire? Well, if it's muscles, you know, within the, the, the spinal process or if it's muscles from the lat connection, whether it, that's kind of like a shoulder to hip connection, it's really any kind of muscles there. We want things to turn on and be more supportive for you. So... You know, with this guy, Bill, Bill talked to me actually about that as well, because he was introduced to that idea of having it done, um, you know, and so the sense of the range of motion probably being much limited, I need you to be careful, throwing arm overhead might not be the best idea there, there might be some heavy stress onto the, the glenohumeral joint right here. Um, so you would need to be careful, what I would probably start with is more so of just a, the push and pull. And that's where we all need to adjust to, you know, accordingly to how the body is, whether you have some surgical, you know, procedures done. Um, but yeah, without scapular movement, overhead movement might be an issue. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from Tina Duong again. Um, Mitch, could you talk about using bands like TRX to work as an assist with movement to get through the full range of motion? For that those is a, who are that not is a good question. Let's see if I can actually uh, just demonstrate here. I'm going to flip this around. I think you guys should be able to see me really well. So this is a huge one that Bill and I did as well. Um, we started we started with something that I call a golf swing. So it's very relatively similar to a sword swing. So this is a TRX. I have it mounted to the wall up above. Um, if we don't have a TRX, it's not necessarily needed. This would be needed to put a little bit more of our resistance into it. But with this exercise that I'm going to show, not necessarily. Um, a string or a, you know, a rope with a handle on the end tied up somewhere high, that would also work. Um, you know, if you want to purchase the TRX, they're fantastic. 
but it is a little bit more on the, on the you know, financial side there. It's about $300 probably. Um, so when we use this though, you can just kind of push against that resistance. So what I have Bill do, I'm gonna flip around and show you guys, this will be my left arm, is we just swing. So it will come up. If Bill can't swing, which when we first started, he could not, I just guide his hand and I just bring it up and the scapula goes up. So as we talk about that fusing of the scapula, once again, the overhead movements are probably not the best thing to start with. Um, I don't know how the body would respond if we did some of it and implemented some small things, but that's something that you would want to regress and find more of that drill for that skill. Your skill would be overhead movements. Uh, so this one would be out for that one. Um, but once again, you know, if I just guide that hand and let it go up high, the scapula will reach with the arm bone and so does a lot of the muscular tissue over in the trunk, a lot of that lat muscle. Um, the connecting points of our rotator cuff muscles to our scapula there, or from our scapula to our arm bone, you know, is very, very important. So I'll have him go up, and then sometimes he'll press, and then go back up and bring down, back down. So it's a couple of different functions trying to bring it back into one and, and be relatively smooth with it too. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, we had a question, and maybe this is more of a request for our next show, um, but feel free to also show something out. Uh, uh, Michael wants to know if you have, can, you can show some exercises to strengthen lower abdominal muscles. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, uh, that was a big one that Bill and I work on as well. Um, you know, I can, I can give you a quick answer. Um, and I think actually a, a good answer there, I do believe we posted it, is uh, I have a social media, it's called Ramp fitness um, so if you go there on either facebook or instagram we do have a youtube channel as well we have a few uh, videos that we're starting to post we kind of started doing this a little bit more in an abrupt you know manner once the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic started because people are kind of stuck at home uh, but this one is a dead bug a dead bug is you're just laying on your back both your legs up or uh, your, your knees are bent so you're excuse me i'm sorry my dog is next to me please stop <laughs> um so on your, with your dead bug, you're on your back, your knees are bent, your knees are above your hips. And if you move any of the limbs, you have to control your lower spine from wanting to gravitate upwards. When we do that, and the hip flexors and some of the abdominals are being played, that's a great exercise to get the lower abs. If we extend the leg, if you're able to do that and keep it from like you know, touching the ground, kind of hovering, that's a great exercise as well for those lower abdominals. So I can, I'll go over a couple of things next week as well, but there's a quick answer for you is dead bugs. Okay. Um, there's also a question. Uh, so something that's very common in FSHD is lordosis. And um, I'm not quite sure which core muscles are involved with that, but uh, what are some good exercises to address? Is that... <laughs> And that kind of ties along with that dead bug. So lordosis is, if someone's not familiar, you know, it's, it's we have natural a natural lordotic curve in our lower spine. The natural ability of our of our you know curvatures in our spine is what takes compression. If it was completely straight, we wouldn't really compress very well. It actually probably have something more like that effect. So when we have that natural curve down low, if it goes into excess, that is more of that lordotic curve going too far, like a hyperextension in the low back. Um, a lot of times that can come from a couple of things, hamstrings, glutes, uh, and hip flexors and quad kind of imbalances there. Um, so there, there's a couple different ideas that would go. Something simple again, that would still be a little bit of the dead bug. Um, if we think about a core brace, so if you kind of even just simplify the dead bug even more, you just go onto your back on the ground and try to make that natural curve flat. That's something called a posterior pelvic tilt. And it should get your inner kind of abdominals and something called your transverse abdominus to also protect, protect your inner, your inner trunk, you know, and that's what we're trying to do. And so if you get the pelvic tilt going back and forth, that should help activate some of those muscles and then go into the dead bug. We can do planks if we have that ability. Um, we can do, you know, single holds and I'll go over a couple more things there, but I think something just really simple of like a pelvic tilt, trying to flatten your low back to the ground and get uh, core activation would be a good, good spot to start there. Great. Okay, we have a question. Um, does it matter in the swing? I think you're talking about that upper body one you did before. Uh, so if, does it matter in the swing if the scapula sublates? Yeah, kind of. 
Um, you know, when, when the arm goes overhead, we want some posterior tilt of the scapula in, in a correct manner. Um, you know, but I think, I, I, I think you'd be fine. I think you'd be fine really in general of, of any kind of emotion there. Um, you know, we never want to go through pain. We never want to go through discomfort. Um, knowing what fatigue is and a little bit of discomfort from maybe, you know, not being comfortable with the movement per se is, is a little bit different. Um, you know, it took Bill quite a while to, like he kind of said, to really, really trust me. I mean, he, we, we got along very well right away, but this is a very vulnerable area for him, you know, so having him do certain exercises, we're, we're per pushing the limits for sure. I think it is good. I think it is good to feel uncomfortable sometimes. That's when we create change in the body. Um, but with, without it being a resisted load exercise, I think it would be fine. I think the swing would be fine in general. What you want to know is that really keep it basic and wherever the arm bone goes, the scapula likes to follow. So as long as we can keep it basic there and we're not loading resistance, I don't find it to be a problem. It's mm -hmm. a comment from uh, Tina Duong. Uh, she says, focus on serratus anterior exercises. Go for stability first before mobility. Absolutely. I agree with that. That's been, uh, that's been the process that Mitch has instituted where we're looking to create a... Uh, a, a stable platform for the limb to operate. Yep. Great. We will, uh, Bill and I will use a, a bar. I'll kind of show you here. A bar that sits across the, the squat rack here. So it's similar to this bar. It's right here. It's actually a pull-up bar that I'll put a little bit lower. And that is specifically what we will work there is the serratus anterior and trying to bring the serratus anterior kind of hugs the scapula to the rib cage so it creates that smooth glide um, a weakened serratus anterior you can kind of see the wings in the back side we'll call it scapular winging um, it, it, it's a huge exercise for the sense of stabilization around the, the mid trunk area and then the upper shoulder girdle areas um, you know using a wall is a great exercise there too kind of pushing the forearms against it and doing overhead slides if you have that ability if you do not, you can do one at a time, allow somebody to help you with it. Bill and I will also use a slider. So that will go against the wall. He'll put his hand like so, and he can slide it up and down. That also allows for some stabilization of the serratus. So we would go from a push-up position, you know, and, and like I said, I have the bar there. So it's not flat down to the ground. We have gone from about here down to about, eh, I'd say maybe about there where Bill feels comfortable with the serratus interior and the triceps. The triceps are probably a little bit more of our bigger struggle in that position than the serratus interior for Bill. But once again, a lot of people are very different there as well. So, you know, know what we're looking for the whole time, but I think the serratus interior is a great, great suggestion there and looking for stability before mobility is also key. And, you know, that's, that's one of the bigger things, you know, where I started instead of just doing a whole bunch of mobile exercises, you know, doing a movements type style, I went with more of that push and pull. And at first, you know, Bill and Judy were, were having fun more of like tug of war, but we want it to be really consistent back and forth. So it's creating stability within movement, within action, but it's not abrupt. It's not powerful. It's just creating stable trunk, stable scapular movement, smooth glide while moving the limbs and then trying to bring it back to the midsection. Terrific. I'll have one final question, which is also perhaps a request for future exercises to talk about. Um, so, you know, an FSHD facial muscle weakness is a, a pretty common problem. Are there any exercises for people who have that facial weakness? That is something I'd have to look into. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Bill and I have not really encountered too much of that. He mm -hmm that hasn't really been a huge effect for Bill. So we haven't really jumped into that area. Um, I think I would need to, you know, do a little bit of, of thought process there. Um, I think some simple ideas would, would probably end up, you know, coming afloat within what I would think about, but yeah, no, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of stumping me a little bit there. I'm not too no sure. Problem. This, to look this, into this that is a, a bit. condition that stumps a lot of people. So you, you'll have some homework to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Love it. Homework is Great. good. Continuing to learn is fantastic, you know, and that's the, that's the best part. There's a lot of, you know, processes out there to find information and go into research databases and stuff. And 
it's fun. It's learning. Learning is great. And, you know, this is a, this is a fun adventure for me too. So, you know, me and Bill have gone into different, you know, road bumps that we've had. Um, he didn't really have that road bump for ourselves. So I'll be able to look into that. That's a great suggestion for, a, you know, an upcoming week for us to be able to talk about a couple of things there too. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That's been a very illuminating half hour. We're looking forward to seeing you again next week. And Absolutely. to our listeners, I just want to remind you that this week we'll, we will have on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we have Belinda Miller with her story hour, and um, that will be on Facebook Live. Um, and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern time is FSHD Radio. And I hope that you guys, maybe this week or one of these upcoming weeks, might be able to guest on that show and carry on yeah. the conversation there. Then this Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we have Julie Hirschberg from Reactive Physical Therapy. She's a doctor of physical therapy from the University of Southern California. And she will be talking about uh, physical therapy for FSHD. It's an area that she has specialized in. And so this is a good week, I guess, for getting into shape for all of us who are <laughs> sheltering in place and uh, all your best intentions for exercise can fall by the wayside when you can't get to the gym. So we hope we can get you back on, on track to a f healthy physical regimen. So we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening today.